Good morning, everybody. This is Priya Darshini from Cambridge Institute of Technology. Uh, today, I'm dealing with the topic general 3D rotation, which comes under module three of VTO syllabus. In the previous video, we have just learned the first scenario of general 3D rotation. Um, that's nothing but a rotation about around an axis parallel to x-axis. So we have an arbitrary axis or a rotation axis, which we are seeing in a diagram uh, that is um, this, a dotted uh, red color line, which is parallel to any one of this coordinate axis. So the things are very easy as I've described you in the last class. But today's topic is rotation about an arbitrary axis. What happens with respect to the arbitrary axis? So what do you mean by arbitrary axis? Arbitrary axis is we have a, a rotation axis or I call it as the arbitrary axis, which is not parallel to any one of the axis like. So we have a three axis like this. We are taking a right hand route from your end if you see the z axis is towards you, it is a, which is a right hand coordinate system. Uh, the green color is your x axis and blue color is your y axis. The arbitrary axis will not be parallel to any of these three axes. <coughs> it will not be parallel to any of these three axes. If when there is no parallel, then what is the scenario? What are the steps we take up? So my next steps talks about the below figure shows the five. We will see a five different steps of transformation. Obtaining a composite matrix for rotation about an arbitrary axis with the rotation axis projected on the z axis. So this axis as an arbitrary axis, I have an object around this an arbitrary axis, axis which has to be rotated, but I don't have a matrix for this arbitrary axis. Either I need to bring this arbitrary axis onto the x-axis or onto the y-axis or onto the z-axis. On any one axis, as I should bring it. So that is what we, have, we will see. So currently, here we are seeing that for our convenient way, we will bring our axis, I mean rotation axis, we will consider that we will rotate around the z-axis because it is our convenient way. Just you can take this or this. By default, any rotation will happen with respect to z-axis. That's why we have taken z. And our 2D also happens with respect to z, making z as zero in the 2D. So what are the five steps we will take up? The first step is actually, uh, we have an arbitrary axis, which is actually um, not parallel. This is my first initial position, which is not parallel. You can see that the red dotted is an arbitrary axis, which is not parallel to any of the uh, coordinate axis. Now, what is my step one says, please, when you have a, this uh, arbitrary axis, my black color pen is an arbitrary axis, please, because my rotation, any kind of a rotation matrix which I have, it is with respect to the origin. The rotation matrix operates with respect to the origin. So it is my duty to see to that. All arbitrary axis should be pulled back to the origin. That is my first step I'm doing. So when I'm pulling back, what I'm doing, I'm translating, I'm just pulling my down point. If I consider this point is P2 and this down point is P1, then as shown in the figure, I am just pulling, it was like this, now I'm pulling like this. My P1 to the origin, that's my step one. Step two says, Please rotate. Once if it is in the origin, see to that you bring this axis on to the z axis. Fine. To bring on to the z axis in one step, I can't bring it. I have two more steps here to bring on to the z axis. I have 
two more steps here. Okay, let me assume we bought to the Z axis because I'm rotating with respect to the Z axis. Next, step three says, once you bring back to the Z axis, what we are doing, we are rotating with respect to the, the object is rotating with respect to the Z axis because I am placing my uh, arbitrary axis on the Z axis. It is on the Z axis. Now I start rotating. Once the rotation is done, my job is done. I have rotated the object. So my job is go back to your previous position. That have, that's nothing but my rotation inverse. Once you're here, translate back to your original position with the object. So I'm done with my rotation with respect to the arbitrary axis. So what I'm doing, translate or rotate so that it lies onto the z-axis, then rotate inverse, translate inverse. Is that clear? So now, in this step, which is the step? In the step two, rotation onto the z-axis, I have two steps to be followed. Which are the two steps? Step number one, that is A, I'll say you need to rotate with respect to the x-axis. That's my first step. B, rotate with respect to the y-axis. Okay, rotate with respect to the x-axis. Then I will come to the z-axis. Then I will achieve, after these two steps, I will achieve my this step. Or I will achieve my this step where I could see my arbitrary axis is lying on the z-axis. How I will do that? So this is an arbitrary axis, right? When you're rotating, as we have already seen in our previous video, it is like this, your thumb like this, and this rotation is goes like this, and this rotation goes like this. So. If my arbitrary axis is like this, my x-axis will rotate like this, okay? So now, I am rotating with respect to x-axis, not completely, one-fourth, so that this arbitrary axis lies on the plane of x and z plane. You are seeing now on the plane of x and z plane. Once it is on the x and z plane, I am rotating this with respect to the y-axis around the y-axis and bringing back this arbitrary axis sorry bringing back this arbitrary axis onto the z-axis so this is my two rotation to bring this uh, arbitrary axis onto the z-axis now we will see what happens in our uh, derivation part fine so this is all so hope you have understood this right so we will go to the next point. We have a st five steps as we already have understood. The five step, translate, rotate, perform in actual rotation. This is uh, with respect to Z axis. We'll rotate with respect to Z axis. And I'll take an inverse of both. <coughs> so our convenient way of rota for rotation is Z axis. We'll choose a Z axis rotation. So now, uh, before uh, starting, let me uh, uh, take a definition for a vector, fine. So, what is that ve vector? We assume What was our uh, vector? This is my z, x, y. So uh, our uh, vector position was this. Fine. So this is our vector position. Where? The point here is P2, 
point, the other point is P1. Either I can define my vector based on the one point or I can define with respect to the two points. Okay. With the help of the concept direction cosines. So here, let me explain uh, the vector with respect to the two points. So I have taken with respect to the two point here. What is a vector? Before we start, what is a vector? Which has both magnitude and direction. Direction we have already given. Counterclockwise direction. It takes and this is my direction. It's given. What can be the magnitude? Magnitude is nothing but the distance between these two point end points is talks about the magnitude. Right? So, so let us give a basic definition for a vector here. So vector V, if I say P2 minus P1, so direction I really can't give any calculation or explanation. So magnitude is P2 minus direction we have already assumed. Uh, magnitude is P2 minus P1. I will get the actual distance. What will be the P2? Each and every point of P2 gives me the distance with respect to each coordinate, right? Distance with respect to X, distance with respect to Z, distance with respect to Y. So each point will have X, Y, Z distances. So I need to take a difference with respect to each and every coordinate. So my actual vector will become x2 minus x1. I can define like this y2 minus y1 and z2 minus z1. Fine. I'll make now one more assumption. That. Sorry. Before that. I'll make one more assumption saying that uh, I'll consider this vector as a unit vector. The unit rotation axis, unit rotation axis vector, okay? What vector it is? Rotation axis, because we assume this x, y, z is also our vectors. So in order to avoid the confusion, we are telling rotation axis vector, I specify that as a u, okay? The vector name, I specify it as a u. So how will I define that now? How will I define? U is equal to V divided by magnitude of V. This is my unit vector definition. Fine. Which I can also say it as an ABC. What is your ABC? Your ABC is your direction cosines. I call it as direction cosines. So ABC is our direction cosine. <clears throat> what do you mean by direction cosine? Direction or a distance between each and every coordinate axis. X axis direction cosine is A. Y, B, uh, y axis direction cosine is B. Z axis direction cosine is C. That means this unit vector has moved how long with respect to x axis, with respect to y axis, and with respect to z axis, fine? Which I call it as the direction cosines. Now, let me define. Okay, it has 
it's overlapped. Let me dis define um, a direction cosines, the formula for the direction cosines. Okay, the formula for the direction cosines are A is equal to x2 minus x1 divided by vector v. If I talk it as a unit vector, obviously my magnitude v will become as 1, right? But let's write like this. v is equal to, so that means the distance between, the distance in the, this is x1, the distance in the x-axis is nothing but your a. v is equal to y2 minus y1. Z2 minus Z1. So actually our uh, magnitude V is nothing but R. It is 1. So finally my definition will be only this much. But we will write. Because as it is a unit vector, it will become 1. So A is equal to the distance with respect to X axis. B is equal to distance with respect to Y axis. C is equal to distance with respect to Z axis. How much it has moved. Which I call it as a direction sides. So hope you have understood this. I'll move to the next one. While rotating about an arbitrary axis, what is the first step you will take in? The first step is nothing but a translation matrix. So what will be my translation matrix then? Translation matrix will be, I am actually moving my point which is my arbitrary is this, right? I am moving this x1 point to where okay, x1 or here, wherever it is. You will move this point where here. This remains as it is. So which point you will translate? Your Oh, sorry, point one. This is point one, which will have x1, y1, z1. Okay, point one. So that's why I am moving only my point one, x1, y1, and z1. Uh, next, we formulate the transformation that will put the rotation axis onto the z axis. So, what is my next calculation? The rotation axis which will put on to the z axis so we already seen that how do we coordinate my rotation axis onto the z axis by having a two steps rotate around i have a two steps so that is nothing but rotate around a z axis sorry x axis and rotation around the y axis so i have so now i have renamed my vector point as u okay now this is my u here okay this is p2 and this was p1 i renamed that vector as u u the, these two rotations are illustrated in the below figure for one possible orientation of vector u. See now here. Now, this is a rotation with respect to x-axis. The first step, this is rotation with respect to y-axis. Fine. To bring to the z-axis, we need two rotation. This two steps. So this is step one and this is step Two, which I've told here. Okay, so you can see here now. I'll assume now. I think it is clear. This was my u is my initial distance between the plane x and y plane. Now the u axis I will bring back to the x and z plane. So I will bring to the x and z plane. I will rename the uh, angle as alpha 
my angle i have renamed here as alpha so i need to consider the angle alpha i need to calculate the angle alpha here once this angle is on the exit plane now i need to move this vector on to the z axis now see here this is what my movement you can see this is what what is the rotation what i named it as beta so in while rotating with respect to y axis i need to calculate the angle beta if these two if i get it then obviously my rotation is done so this is what my goal now so now we will go to the first step i'll write a diagram here okay now i have taken for the convenient way i have take, taken x this is why i've just rotated the axis z if z axis goes up then y axis will come to the right and z axis uh, x axis will come towards you you can use your right hand rule and then start rotating the same three direction rotate your z axis on top and see which one will come towards you that is that will x axis will come towards you so i have taken this axis now for this axis i will draw the vector this vector we have already re renamed it as u for the line op op is a vector u now okay this is how it is direction cosines for op we have renamed it as a b c a traversing with respect to x axis b traversing with respect to y axis c traversing i mean traversing not a traversing a distance between a distance in the z axis how much distance it has moved on the z axis okay so this is my direction cosines what is abc it is a direction cosines fine now let me plot now i will plot this completely on the y z axis to get my my main goal is to get what alpha angle alpha fine let me take this no let me take this and first let me project on to the so what actually i did is op i projected on the xy plane right op i project this diagonal what you can see here this is actually a op which i placed on the uh, xy plane but actually my goal is to place on the yz in a same way okay i think now you can able to see properly now op i have projected on the yz plane okay the yz plane now here i will write an angle this is my alpha angle which i need to get op when i project on to the yz plane before that let me mention all the uh, abc with respect to the op op how much it has moved towards op a will be this b will be which one see your y axis where is your y axis which is parallel to the y axis this is a parallel to the y axis see your z axis which point is actually parallel to the z axis this is c i will write in the same uh, color this is a uh, this is b and this is c okay 
that is my direction cosines with respect to op with respect to op now if i project op on to the yz plane if i project op on to the yz plane so my which is that that is a d this dotted line i'll mix with black this dotted line which i rename it as o dash which i rename it as o dash so then let me as i have assumed this as a vector let me take a direction cosines what will be the direction cosine for this d or a u dash check a direction cosine for the u dash what will be the direction cosine for the u dash u dash is not lying on the x it, it will never come on the x because it is a completely on the y z plane which is completely not on the x plane so x will become zero direction cosines of that x will become zero and then and in the other way if i tell this op is actually trying to rotate with respect to x axis obviously x axis will become constant so i'll not have any kind of a movement with respect to x axis so x axis is equal to 0 and uh, what is y axis is b what is z axis it is c the direction cosines with respect to u dash on u dash is o sorry 0 this is 0 It is not. It is not O. It is zero. Okay, zero D C for D. So what is D then? I have named the D as the distance of or the length of the U dash. I have just taken D just for the length of the U dash because a vector gives a direction and magnitude. I need a magnitude which is a which I need. the length of the u dash now here which is that angle i need to calculate the angle what i need to calculate is alpha here okay hope you have understood this alpha how is this alpha if i take the alpha then if i get the alpha then op if i use with respect to alpha angle then op will come on the x z plane where is my x z plane my x z plane is here it will come on this plane it will come on this plane fine so now you understood about the alpha alpha calculation <clears throat> so now directly start uh, calculating the alpha so now what did i say now op is my vector u op is my vector u which i have to rotate about an axis on the on the axis z axis fine right? so for that i need a two rotations right so now what is my now first rotation i'll do with respect to the x axis this is what my calculating the alpha for calculating the alpha we have to determine what is the alpha angle what is the alpha angle now this we have done project the unit vector u along op into the y z plane we have projected so now we have already seen bc as a direction cosines now considering the right angle triangle so what will be the angle now so let me write it here i have taken only this part now i'll take only this part which part right angle triangle that's nothing but this i have written it as op which is my U. sorry sorry it is not op it is d okay it is d uh which is nothing but your u dash this is b uh c c c actually if it projects parallelly here c was here okay 
So this parallelly will become C. Now I'm not calculating. So this is a right angle triangle. My angle is alpha here. Considering this, what I will calculate? Cos alpha and sine alpha because I need a rotation, a rotation axis matrix, transformation matrix I need with respect to the x axis. So for that, what I need? Cos alpha and sine alpha. Fine. We'll start here calculating. Let's assume this is a right angle. This is alpha. This is B. This is C. And this is B. I need to calculate what? Cos alpha. Uh, uh, before uh, calculating cos alpha, actually, I need to calculate cos alpha and sine alpha. Before that, let me calculate the right angle triangle formula, which is nothing but a d square is equal to b square plus c square. So I have calculated the value for d because I need for the future use, which is a square root of b square plus c square. Why I have calculated d? Because d is a magnitude. I need the value of d, no? Magnitude of u double dash. Now here I can take this as u double dash. Vector u. So now I need to calculate what? Angle. For calculating the angle, what I need to do? We establish a transformation matrix for rotation around the x-axis by determining the values of sine and cosine of the rotation angle necessary to get op onto the exit plane my major uh, uh, here role is to place onto the exit plane right so now what is a cos alpha cos alpha what okay let me calculate here itself what is a cos alpha cos alpha is adjacent by hypotenuse which is your adjacent C divided by hypotenuse is D. Sine alpha is opposite by hypotenuse. What is opposite? Opposite is B divided by D. So C by D and B by D is my cos alpha and sine alpha. Hope you have understood. So what is a cos alpha? Cos alpha is equal to C by D and sine alpha is equal to and sine alpha is equal to b by d if we want an alpha d we have already calculated right where d is equal to square root of b square plus c square we have already got that d if you want we can also calculate alpha, but calculating like this is not my a perfect one. We need to use both b square plus c square. I have elaborated the d so. We can calculate alpha like this also, but if you want to get a perfect angle, we have to use both cos and uh, sine both to detect the angle. It has a different methods in uh, mathematics. So now that we determine the values of cos alpha and sine alpha in terms of components of vector u, right? We can set up the matrix elements of rotation of this vector about the x-axis and into the x plane now what i need i need a rotation transformation matrix with respect to the x axis with respect to the x axis that's my main motto with respect to the x axis now what will be my rotation with respect to, please go back and check your rotation with respect to the x axis what is the formula this is a rotation with respect to x-axis. Later, I want rotation with respect to y-axis. Please note down somewhere on your note. So wherever I have cos theta, I am replacing the formula of cos alpha. Wherever I have sine theta, I am replacing the sine alpha. Is that clear? 
these two you please note down i am replacing the formula of cos alpha sin alpha here i will just write here rotation with respect to x axis is uh, I'll just write right here rotation with respect to x axis 1 0 0 0 0 c by d minus b by d 0 0 b by d c by d 0 0 0 0 1 fine so oh sorry This is nothing but your cos theta minus sin theta, sin theta cos theta. This is with respect to x-axis. Now for alpha, for alpha you just replace it 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. What is cos alpha? C by D, right? Cos theta, C by D. So in this place I'll write C by D. Sin alpha is? b by d it is minus sine so minus b by d next zero zero sine theta b by d cos theta c by d zero 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 one this is with respect to x axis find the same way now it has come to the second step that it has come to the uh on to the, it has to now we, i have got my rotation here right this is my rotation if i apply this rotation then the op will come on the yeah here the op now will come on the exact plane because i have got alpha I have, i've got the rotation matrix also now i need rotation with respect to the y axis fine now let us see y axis rotation now so that it will come on the z axis so now i will just write the direction again so this i will write y z x So where the u, u dash, I've just, I'm sorry here it is u dash. This is u, this will become u dash, this will become u double dash. I just got confused with the naming. Is that clear? OP is u, D is u dash. Now a new which is on the exit plane, I call it as a U double dash. Hope it's clear for you. Here by mistake I've written U double dash. So now it is for me U double dash. That will be here. So that is U double dash. What is a direction cosine? of u double dash x axis now it will become x axis moment because it will uh, it will um, rotate around y axis right this is x axis Okay, this will be A. This will be A. I assume this as B. Why will I assume this as D? Because I can't take a old B and C because the movement or the values changes when I rotate with respect to the Y axis. Now I'm rotating with respect to the Y axis. But here, why we are assuming it as d so that means my z axis distance so here y will not come into the picture what will be my direction cosines a y is zero 
y is 0 0 i'm writing like this and on this z i'm taking direction cosine as d why i'm taking as d because this u double dash is actually placing on the z axis now in one point the u double dash will actually after after placing after rotating where the u double dash will come it will come here i have written down it here so that means it is nothing but my distance of that view of that u double dash which always remains it as d i have already calculated in the previous uh, scenario that d is equal to a value the magnitude of d i have already cal calculated that remains as it is because the vector is same so the vector places on to the z axis i will have the same distance there right same distance is that's why my z direction cosine i will name it as d now which one i have to calculate actually i need to calculate which one this one right this is my angle that i need to calculate but to calculate this it's little difficult theoretically so which one i will calculate i will calculate this fine i will calculate beta and then i will make this as what minus beta then i will get the other angle it is a inverse reverse of uh, positive beta is nothing but other angles 360 minus beta is my reverse of that i will get minus beta if so what i will calculate calculating beta is very easy for me then minus beta the other angle green angle green dotted the uh, angle so what i will do i will calculate the orange color beta first and then the same thing i will make it as a negative it will be easy for me so now beta now what is my main goal to calculate beta so let me directly calculate here itself so this is all the theoretical that i have done a u dash and all those things you can read and then start comparing so now which one i will calculate directly here only i will calculate it is like this okay i'll take in black what is an angle now this this and this where this is beta mm, this is u double dash uh, the, the, what is i'll keep it as u double dash hypotenuse a and b okay now which what i have to calculate now i have to calculate cos beta now i'm rotating with respect to y axis while uh, rotating cos beta and sin beta i have to calculate it okay okay this is my explanation here rotation about by beta about y axis now similar to the step of alpha we will calculate beta that is nothing but cosine and sine so let me re rewrite it here it is like this it is not actually a right angle <laughs> this is u double dash this is d this is a okay so what will be my cosine cos cos beta is equal to what is cos beta adjacent by hypotenuse what is adjacent d divided by what is hypotenuse u double dash what is u double dash mag because it is a vector right length of unit vector we have already told it is a unit vector cos beta i can name make it as d divided by u dash is what u u already i have we have may, may named it as v divided by magnitude of v that is a unit vector this is u so that means 
that is cos beta is equal to d right i got what is cos beta but we are calculating what we are negating i don't want cos beta i want the other one which is minus beta what is cos minus beta it is positive only cos theta only that is nothing but cos beta which is equals to d only there is no change here now let me go to sin beta sin beta is equal to opposite by hypotenuse that is a divided by u double dash again a divided by length of unit vector that is nothing but a sin beta is a so that is sin minus beta is equal to minus sin beta which is equal to minus a please note it i have got now sin and cos so now sin and cos i got so my transformation matrix transformation matrix for rotation of u double dash about y axis is r y of beta is equal to i have got uh, what is uh, rotation with respect to y how it is i'll just write it is cos theta 0 minus sin theta okay i'll write here y of beta what is r y of theta it is cos theta 0 minus sin theta 0 0 1 0 0 sin theta 0 0 cos theta 0 0 0 0 1 and this is minus yeah. minus sin theta 0 cos theta so here it is plus yeah now let us replace so what is cos theta cos theta is d okay cos theta is d 0 sin theta is what minus a Zero. Next, zero one zero zero minus sine theta minus a becomes plus a. Zero d zero 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 one. So now we have done with respect to x-axis, y-axis, but now we need. what is what is next now it has come on to the z axis rotation right now it has placed what is placed our unit vector is placed on the z axis now now once it is placed on the z axis now we have to do the actual rotation right so that is nothing but r z of theta that is nothing but cos theta minus sin theta 0 0 sin theta cos theta 0 0 
0010001. This is our actual rotation once the vector u comes and plays on the z axis. Place on the z axis. Fine. Now the last part. The last part is what will be our composite matrix? What will be our composite matrix? Because this, I have this is translation, rotation, inverse, all these I have. What will be my final rotation matrix? How will I start? I will start from right to left always. Which one I did first? I did first translation. Right? Because now I need to bring back. What is my final? Now I did the rotation here. That's all. It came onto the z-axis. I did the rotation. After doing rotation, what I should do? I should bring back everything to the actual, uh, back to the position. So what is my final rotation? I should do translate first. After translate, what did we do? Rotation with respect to x-axis, that is with respect to alpha, right? Multiplied by rotation with respect to y-axis with respect to angle beta, right? X, Y, after X, Y, what did we do? This part, that is with res actual rotation with respect to theta. How much ever we ask? Theta will be a user defined, what, whatever the user wants. Then what I should do now? Now I have to go back. I have to do inverse of this, inverse of this, inverse of this to go back to the position. So what I will do? Rotation inverse of Y, beta inverse I will take. Rotation inverse of x alpha we will take. Then I will do translation inverse. This is my actual matrix. Final composite matrix. 